Hello all. The topic of discussion today is shade selection in fixed prosthodontics. At the end of the class, you all will get to know the importance of color and shade selection in dentistry, the different methods, the different steps involved in shade selection, and also how to communicate shade selection to a laboratory. Determining the exact shade is one of the most crucial steps in aesthetic restorative dentistry. Now, what is shade selection? Shade selection is a process of converting shade perception into shade communication. That is the conversion of color into a terminology and language and then communicating it to the laboratory technician for the fabrication of a restoration. Now to know that we must first understand what is a color wheel or a color circle. In visible light spectrum, three large bands of color are noted, that is red, green and blue. These three colors are determined as the primary addictive colors which mix in different degrees to form the complementary colors or the secondary colors. Combining all three colors produces white color with different intensities. The basic tool for combining colors is a color circle or a color wheel. The arrangement of the primary and the secondary colors is made in the pattern of a wheel in which the colors make the components of the rim of the wheel. This type of an organization of different colors is known as the color wheel or the color circle. Color mixing can be explained in two modes, the addictive colors and the subtractive colors. In addictive color mixture model, Two or more primary colors are added to produce new colors such as the cyan, magenta, yellow and white that is the subtractive primary colors based on the intensity of the initial color mixture used. In the subtractive model, it starts with white, the color with no things being subtracted and ends in black with all color wavelengths being subtracted. Addictive color mixing is usually done with a combination of lights and illuminants, whereas subtractive color mixing is used in painting and printing. Color perception or color triad. So as you can see on the screen, there is a Venn diagram denoting three important components of the color. That is the observer, object and the environment. Observer refers to the dentist. Object refers to the patient and environment refers to the dental operatory. In shade determination, understanding color triad is crucial and uh, the light source ref refers to the fact that the surface color appearance of an object depends on the quality of the color illumination. Natural light is the ideal light source. Different light sources give different light colors. Usually in a dental operatory, natural light is needed to do shade selection. The object has the capability to alter color of the light. When the object absorbs radiating visible light, color appears. So whenever the visible light enters the observer's eyes, it passes through the transparent area of the cornea and the crystalline lens. And then the image is focused on the retina. The iris can dilate on constrict depending on the level of illumination and it regulates the quantity of the light entering the eye. Color description can be seen in two types. One is the Munsell color system, next is the CIE lab color system. Now Munsell color system was given by a color scientist called as Professor Munsell. Every visible color has three attributes, simply defined as hue, chroma and value. Hue is the color such as the dominant color being red, blue, green, etc. Value being the lightness or darkness and chroma is the intensity of the color. The Munsell color system is a three-dimensional color space as given in the screen. So values on the vertical axis, whereas the chroma extends outwards and hue is the color's position on the outermost ring. So let us see what are the three dimensions of color, namely hue, chroma and the value. Hue is the dominant color of the object and refers to the dominant wavelengths present in the spectral distribution. Example, the color of the lemon is a yellow color. An addictive color mixing system, red, green and blue are the primary colors. Now coming to chroma, chroma is the degree of the saturation of a particular hue. It is the intensity of the saturation of the color and the chroma scale starts from achromatic or zero with increasing values indicating stronger color. So higher the chroma, more intense is the color. It refers to usually the brightness or the dullness of a color. 
a particular color is classified as weak, moderate or strong according to chroma. Next is value. Value is the lighter or the darker shades of a color. It is a brightness or the relative amount of darkness or lightness in the hue. For shade matching, it's most important value. That is, value is very, very important because value differences can even be seen by individuals who are not trained in color. They can be easily determined even from a distance. Whenever it is not possible to match a perfect shade using the value, it's always better to choose the lighter shade which will allow modifications later via staining. So keep in mind that value is the most important characteristic of shade matching. So these are the three color types that we have seen, the different characteristics of the dimensions, hue being the dominant color, chroma being the degree of saturation and value being the degree of lightness or darkness. Next is the CIE lab color system. Now what is CIE? CIE refers to Commission International de Eclairage or the International Commission of I Eclairage. So uh, what is uh, the CIE lab color system? The CIE lab or the CILAB uh, color system represents the quantitative relationship of colors on three axes. The L value indicates lightness, A and B values are the chromacity coordinates. So in the CIE color lab system, it is a more complicated system. The color differences are given as a formula which is determined by an E value. So these are the different steps in shade selection and shade communication. That is the first step being patient or tooth evaluation, then image capture or shade analysis, communication, interpretation, fabrication, verification, and finally the placement of restoration. So the subsequent slides let us see what are each of these steps one by one. The first step being the patient or tooth evaluation. So even before doing tooth preparation, we do not or find out what is the uh, shade of that particular patient. So it helps in two manners. One, it determines the translucency distribution and two, it helps us in selecting what is the best restorative material that can be given to this particular patient, which will give a satisfactory aesthetic outcome. Next is the image capture or the shade analysis. A color guide is compared to the teeth being matched. It also involves recording additional characteristics. Now, these include any hypocalcifications, any translucencies, surface textures, etc. Communication. Communication means that we have a communication lab form in which we denote whatever values that we need to communicate to the laboratory technician. So we transfer this information of the shade analysis. So finally, the next step being interpretation. So whatever we have written in the lab form, uh, it is understood by the laboratory technician. And then the technician will now fabricate the restoration according to the shades that we have given to them. So different types of intrinsic colors are used. That is that particular ceramic powder itself will have its own intrinsic colors. And also extrinsic glazes can be added to finalize this restoration. So just before sending it to the clinic, the laboratory technician must also ensure that whatever it is being done it should perfectly match with the shade tab that we have sent to them. And finally, just before cementation, the dentist also verifies the ultimate verification of the restoration. So if at all the restoration does not match, all the initial steps have to be repeated. So let us see what are the different shade guide systems that are available. First one is the conventional method. Next one is the technological method. So in conventional method, we'll see that there is a manual type of method, whereas the technological method is an electronic method. So in the conventional method, I've given three examples. So let's see each of them one by one. First is the white Japan classical, then the Ivoclar chromoscope, and the white Japan 3D shade mask. In the white Japan classical, hue is categorized according to the groups of families with letter annotations, that is A, B, C, and D. A is orange, B is yellow, C is yellowish gray, and D is orangish gray. So numbers are also denoted from one to four, and from one to four, there is increase in chroma and decrease in value. So there is increase in chroma and decrease in value from one to four. 
next to this chromoscope shade guide so instead of letters we have numbers here from 100 to 500 so in each of these they have again subcategories from 10 to 40 which is increasing in chroma and decreasing in value so 100 is white 200 is yellow 300 is orange shade 400 is gray and 500 is a brown shade and finally, the example is a white tap and 3D shade master. So in this, the tabs are grouped into five categories with increasing value from one to five. Now, all these tabs have the same brightness and in each of the groups, the chroma increases from the top to bottom. All the groups except one and five have letters L, M and R. So L is yellow. M is the yellow red and R is the red hue. So L, M and R refers to the different hues that we need to use. Coming to the technology based shade guide system, they have their own advantage and disadvantages. The advantage is that it takes very less time to capture the image. So the, the issues such as any dehydration of tooth will not become a problem. And the shade verification can also be done prior to the cementation. Disadvantage primarily are that it is very costly and also it is still a developing technology. Not every lab, not every dentist is uh, used to using technology based shade guide systems. But once we learn them, it is comparatively easy to use. So here I have given four types of examples. So let us see each of them one by one. The first is the Shofu Shade Eye X Chromometer. So like an image, we uh, capture it uh, through a system that is given here. So like a photograph, we take this uh, picture. So we also use a shade tab along with it. So this is directly communicated to the laboratory technician. Nowadays, even DSLR cameras are used by dentists to capture the image. So these images are again transferred to the uh, dental technician so that they can easily uh, note what is the hue, chroma or the value of that particular shade. The next is shade scan. So what happens in shade scan is that it is a handheld unit. So this handheld unit is just like an intraoral scanner. So it will accurately determine what is the shade. So it captures the image and this image is then transferred to a uh, system so that in that particular software we'll be able to determine what is the shade of the patient. Spectro shade system is also very similar to shade scan. So firstly, we do a image analysis. So this image analysis is done by the dentist and then it is transferred to the laboratory technician. So this can be done by sending an email to them. So after the image is captured by the laboratory technician, then they will analyze this uh, shade. So as you can see in this particular uh, screen, uh, the image is captured and then uh, we'll be able to see what is the hue or the chroma or the value of that particular restoration that we need to do. So using a software only, this system would also work. And finally is the x rite Shade Vision System. This is also a handheld unit. So in this handheld unit, first of all, we'll capture the image as you can see on the screen. This is also transferred to the, uh, to the technician via a software. So this is also a very easy method. Also, as I said before, the only problems is that it's still developing and not many labs are maybe uh, equipped with these type of technologies and it's also very costly. So apart from shade selection, we must know different terminologies with respect to the natural teeth, that is translucency, metamerism and fluorescence. Translucency is the degree to which light is transmitted rather than being absorbed or reflected. So as you can see on the screen over here, the incisal edges of a younger teeth especially is very translucent. Because with age, daily functions like eating, brushing, the enamel becomes thinner and it will allow the dentine to appear. This is seen with the teeth being lower in value and higher in chroma. So usually the younger teeth have greater incisal translucency with the enamel appearing often translucent in the incisal edge region. So this has to be definitely noted whenever we do restoration for the younger patients. The next phenomena is metamerism. 
Metamerism, uh, metamerism is uh, the phenomenon of two objects appearing to match in color in one setting, place or environment, but showing apparent differences in the other. So in one particular setting, the teeth will appear in one color and another setting, it will appear in different color. So in natural daylight, what can look like A1 to you may be looking like an A2 shade in a color corrected light, such as the incandescent room light. The final phenomenon is fluorescence. Fluorescence is defined as absorption of UV light, that is the one to 400 nanometer invisible light by an object and its spontaneous emission in longer wavelengths, that is 430 to 450 nanometer visible light. An example of this is a person with a ceramic crown. It may appear that he may not have a teeth at all, especially in a nightclub. So this is because the natural tooth structure absorbs light wavelengths, which are too short to be visible to the eye. So these um, short wavelengths are absorbed and they are then emitted in longer wavelengths. So this is how they will uh, appear fluorescent. So to conclude, in this particular image, we can very well see what is the aesthetic failure that has happened. The shade selection is not proper at all. It looks very artificial. So I'll show an other example. In this particular picture, there is also a crown. So in the previous slide, we could have seen that uh, two one has a crown. But in here, this particular image will not be able to make out. So I hope you all can guess it. So yes, it is a lateral incisor, a one two, which has a crown. It's not very much visible because it is very well uh, capturing or very well easy to see that uh, it matches the translucency. It has some hypogalcification areas. It's also got the accurate shade seen in different line angles. So we are not even able to make out that there is a crown present at the patient's mouth. So that is the most important reason why shade selection becomes crucial. Otherwise, your whole procedure becomes an aesthetic failure. So I hope you all understood the class today. Thank you all for your patient listening.